So today we want to show a little bit more about how we intend for data to be saved off both the Gromit software as well as left data from the PC400 software. Um, and I don't have the Gromit uh, program on my computer, but Sam Schonsberg, one of our interns, has a Windows that he's kindly um, volunteered to help show this, use for this demo. So that'll be great. A few minutes after two here, but I guess we'll, we'll get started and I'll just leave the meeting open for a while to see if anyone else joins and then we'll get it posted afterwards too. Sam, do you want to uh, bring up Gromit? Yeah, let's see. All right. Look good? Yep, I can see that. All right. Cool. So Sam and I were just exploring ways to, um, I, I hate to say automate because it's, it's kind of just a feature of Grob, but uh, you can go into the, you can go into the main settings and go to report settings as he's showing here. Yep. And based on, for our team, we have different laptops that we're going to be using. So there's a way to automatically save data to a certain um, path or, or somewhere else. And you can actually copy. So um, down about three or four lines from the bottom there, the path for additional folder. We're, we're hoping to be able to, um, to just make our uh, external hard drives this secondary saving path. And then as long as you go in and you, um, you name and you check that you want. So up at the top right where it says report, this, um, this screen that we're altering options for is going to be for a TTAA report. So you would just want to set these saved settings um, for your profile data, um, for, for the other different kinds of reports we want, SKU T and stuff like that. Um, but one of the issues that came up is that some of the code, like Sam's code, for example, likes it's a little bit more convenient to have data um, without the header information, which would come from saving active view. And so all of this, uh, all of this automated data saving that we're showing in this report settings um, page, this is going to be for data that has the header information. And uh, that'll work with the atmosphere background characterization code we have. Um, and so it looks like at this point, you're going to have to, we're going to have to be saving the active view by hand, which is um, when you're actually doing a simulation or a sounding, the windows that are available for you to see on screen, whether they're um, the raw data or the SKU-T or whatever, you can right click on the frame of that window and, and say save active view and you can choose to save that as a text file. Um, so we'll want to, we'll still have to be doing that by hand for now, but hopefully this, this portion of automating saving some of the data will help out. Um, and you can see the naming convention there, year, month, day, and uh, as long as that information is there and then we're able to, you know, add on our own um, prefixes or whatever else we need to identify what they are, that'll, that'll be good. If I could add something, Carl. Please do. Um, for your settings to be saved in the report settings, it's really annoying. You can't see the bottom of this window, so you actually have to go full screen and then hit this OK. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it doesn't remember what you said. <laughs> Silly idiosyncratic little thing there, but yeah, you got it. You got it apply the changes and the, of course the button is hidden from view by default. And here's the save active view button. Cool. So yeah, as long as that's, I'll just run through that one more time to make sure every, that's clear to everyone. The save active view works for saving data, but it doesn't include headers necessarily, which some of the code needs. Um, but it is, it is pretty easy to save by hand. And then you can, you can direct where you want GRA to save your files. And so I think by default, Sam had his computer saving to um, reports on different ones. It's in archives. So it actually might be different where 
where it's save, set to save by default, but um, as long as you know where it's going and we can get it on box, then that should be fine. And then um, unless, unless there's any questions about that, the other, the other uh, aspect of saving data that we want to discuss uh, is the left, saving out the left data. And I, I think this is hopefully well-timed because the teams are, um, are starting to assemble their lefts with, <laughs> with some difficulty, unfortunately, I might add, but I think we're, we're clearing that up um, today. So that's good. Uh, but the PC400 data logger software that's used to connect with the left, um, it, when, you're, when you're reading data live you know, in the field, um, it's saving all of that to a report. And what you can do is, uh, what's it called again, Sam? Um, it's I just, believe. It's a tab on PC400. It's on the far right. It's called. I think it says collect data, but collect let me. Collect data, yeah. Yeah, I have it up on the little computer next to me, and it's the collect data tab. Can I jump in real quick? Um, Matt threw up a good question about which report types do we want to save on yeah. the bra? And um, profile data for sure. And then the other thing is, you if there's a zip a GSF files, those are the ones that you need to rerun um, uh, if you want to run a simulation. And it seems we we are having some inconsistencies from GRA on that. Sometimes you need a zip folder of those, and sometimes it saves that. Other times we just need one GSF file. So any any zip or GSF files we save. And then. Um, Last, for us, the weather service folks have wanted buffer reports. So that's something Sam's been working on, is making sure that we can save buffer reports um, to get every afternoon after a launch to the weather service. So all of that will go into the SOP, or it is in the SOP. I guess I'll ask Carl if it's in the SOP. And, yeah, we'll and, oops, sorry. I did find today in the reports folder, where all the gras stuff is stored, there are actual buffer files that are created automatically. I found them on on Gary. Oh, perfect. Yeah, so they're not like they're they're like dot buffer. That's perfect. And we don't actually need the TTAA reports. That's just the top one on that list. And I guess I'd say I noticed that Sam saying words like Gary or Ace. Those are the names of our computers. And since for every launch, the, the data gets saved locally on the computer that you use during the launch. So we have taken to putting the name of the computer quite often in our, um, in the naming convention, because if for some reason we lose data or it's incomplete or it, it doesn't look like it run, ran properly or we need to change something and rerun the, the run, we have to go back to that computer often and find it. So that's why we have stuck with putting the computer name into the title. And I did update the naming conventions in the post-flight procedure in the SOP, um, but I'll, given that, given that we're now looking at this kind of half automated, half saving the active view yourself, I'll go and make sure that all still makes sense and update it again if needed. Yeah, I guess I would just say um, the one thing you definitely want to have in box and saved is the profile data, because that's what everybody's working from um, for their analysis. And I'd, I would say, uh, We've been saving them as .txt files. Um, CSV is fine as well. Um, so I guess I'd say CSV or .txt to be consistent. Yeah, and then I don't know if it's explained, but um, in the naming convention, we have a prefix for our flights W and L. So for example, W2, L2, or W1, L1, and that just stands for week and launch. So um, when it's just numbers, when it's just the date and the time, and they're at the end of the summer, there's a ton of them, it's really hard to read. So 
a prefix of like week three, launch one, week three, launch two, week three, launch three, just helps to read and uh, organize the data a little bit better. And then, yeah, sorry we, sorry we can't exactly screen share. Um, I guess, Sam, if you, if you want, you could try holding up the, um, the tablet just to your screen so people can see what it looks like. But it's pretty straightforward. The, the only issue you know, with showing it like that is that the, um, the iPad actually has to be hooked up to the left. And so we won't, we won't get much, um, not that the data would actually need to be accurate, but we won't get much inside. But it's just a collect data tab, and then you can save out all of the, the data that's, that's logged there in the cache. Nice. So there's all those icons at the top. And then just below there, there's a few tabs and one of them just says collect data. That's what you need to click on. <laughs> Thanks, you, Sam. You have to be connected to the left for it to work. Right. Cool. And then um, just, just a bit of uh, an update for the Oklahoma team here. Um, Ashley came back from the hardware store and I've got this this piece pulled off and what we what the folks at the hardware store told us is that this is probably a, a piece of fencing so I'm going to try and contact a fencing supply place and see if we can get a nice hard there's like a super super hard piece of PVC and you can see there's a couple set screws here um, to just be able to uh, actually bolt the the left head onto the mast properly so if, uh, if you guys are working with a noodle, yeah, if you guys are working, thank you so much for, for your patience with that. And it's good to hear you figured out the, the battery connection. And if you're working with a noodle and you can make it work for now, that's good. And um, okay, perfect. Uh, if anyone hasn't checked the chat, it, it looks like uh, Dr. Bernard's and the Idaho team made a 3D printed cap. And um, so if they, if they end up sharing that, which sounds like they will, um, I can 3D print caps that people need, or if you have access to a 3D printer, uh, you can print your own. That's perfect. Put it in a box, awesome. And, and uh, Matt, were you able, were you guys able to figure out a battery holder as well? Uh, Carl, we just used zip ties um, and zip tied it through the holes on the uh, housing. Perfect. Okay, so um, if the other teams are having any issues with mounting the little very crude, um, you know, mounting bracket that I, I provided for the battery, sounds like zip tying is, a, is an option. You, you may have to, with the length of, of the zip tie, double it up or, or what, but should be able to figure it out. Have you guys actually assembled your left yet, Matt? I will turn it over to the left expert. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, we're just about there. Uh, we're setting up the battery and solar panel today, but software, everything else is good to go. Cool. And Dr. Bailey says that they they've got theirs and they're they're still um, working on putting it together. They'll start tomorrow. And the battery inside of the box shouldn't be a problem. That's how we have it set up too. So inside of our box is the data logger and the battery. And I don't know that orientation or placement really matters, but uh, the way that we have it is the battery facing on its side with the terminals facing out towards the person accessing the box on top. And then the little, um, the wires coming down and plugging into the data logger below. But whatever. Actually can Sam, is the left nearby? Do you want to open it up and just show everyone how it's sitting in there? Yeah. Sure. Um, the top is off right now, but. Carl, if you'd stop sharing your screen so that when Sam talks, yeah. it full screen. Actually, we can share your screen. Oh, I can, I can stop. <laughs> There, we, there go. we go. You can. 
see that. It'll back up a little bit. Can you see that? Yep. Yep. Oh. I can see. All right. I'm good. Okay. So they're good. Okay. We took some pretty clear pictures in that left setup document too. We, we can maybe, Sam and Ashley, if you can take some photos and put them up in box of the connections, that might be helpful. So there's that whole document. Uh, sorry, I've got feedback from two computers. Uh, we have a lot of pictures uploaded already. Yeah, we made that document. Yeah, we made that document that you guys picked. Okay. Do you know which folder it's in? It's the left Off weather station. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, I, th I think Carl uploaded it to Box. We sent it to Carl. The updated left documentation. And then the Oklahoma team, as they were following through that, um, <clears throat> like I think one of the one of the pictures that shows the connections, it doesn't actually show. <clears throat> where the black and uh, red battery um, wires actually go off to. They just kind of run out of the picture. Um, so we can we can take some better pictures and update that, or if, if you guys want to take some pictures and update that and re-upload, um, that, you know, that would be helpful. Um, just, uh, you know, Sam and Ashley did a great job of putting that document together because there was an even an even worse one w that they were using that we just slapped together before 2019. But uh, yeah, it, getting a a few people on, making sure that's you know makes sense to everyone will help in the future too. For next time, someone needs to assemble a left. Some feedback from Idaho when working through that document. It'd be nice if you put the original pictures in the box file so that we could zoom into them. Um, Rosalind said they. We're a little hard to zoom in as she was trying to look at specific connections. Gotcha. So instead of having them all on one page, having either um, figures at full size or else just the images themselves accessible on box there. Yeah, even if they're the same uh, pictures that were were there, that way you can yeah. zoom in the pictures and still have the working document. Yeah, I see. I see Caitlin saying they were they were zoomed in a crazy amount and trying to work with probably <laughs> small pictures with low resolution. So, yeah, I will. Uh, I'll make sure I get those photos from Sam and Ashley and upload them so that you can just look at the the full size, full resolution images. And I'll since I'm doing that, I'll just try and include a few a few more images that show a little bit more of the of the box. Okay, hey, cool. Well, we just, it, we thought that this would be a, a good meeting to have before everyone actually starts flying balloons and saving out data. So, um, you know, please let me or, or anyone else from our team know if there's any issues with PC400, um, saving, uh, saving reports that way, or if any of the report settings for trying to automate some of the saving doesn't make sense. But uh, hopefully we'll all be on the same page for actually linking up and then uh, at the beginning of July doing a, a nationwide coordinated flight, which will be really cool. Carl, uh, we had one other request. If yeah. there were any SOPs related to the PC 400 and uh, the data collection from that. Um, there's, I think that there's some basic documentation on the Campbell Scientific website regarding the the software, um, but I don't know that we've we've written up an uh, an SOP for it exactly. Um, but I can uh, I can try to compile or get someone to compile something like that that would be a a working document for um, for working with PC four hundred that isn't necessarily you know every page of the user manual. Okay, and we may have Rosalind reach out to maybe Sam and Ashley and. She's, she's been fighting what she found on the Campbell Scientific website, so. I see. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, and, and Rosalind, you can, um, you can loop me in on that, and I'll be happy to help in any way that I can as well. And Ashley is uploading the photos for the left right now. 
Thank you. And Caitlin, do you, did you, it looks like on the um, chat here in the participant window, you have your hand raised. Do you have, do you have a question or some feedback? Hello? Hello? Okay. <laughs> Hold on. Turn it down. Sorry, uh, this is Caitlin. My computer's um, microphone wasn't working, um, so we're going to try Theo's. Um, well, can, I don't know if I can hear things. Um, so I'm just going to talk and we'll make it work. Anyway, um, for the Campbell Scientific um, registration thing, we got the email um, like with the code, and it said that you can only use it on one computer. Um, currently, we don't have a team computer for the project, um, it'll be a couple weeks um, before we are able to uh, purchase it. Um, all right now, Dr. Jacobs thinking July 1st, um, but if need be, we might be able to order it sooner. Basically, overall question is, if we um, register it now, are we able to transfer it to another computer or is it just like a one-time deal? Yeah, you can. Oh. I think, I think what they, I think that the limit on that is that only one license can be used at a time. So you could sign in to one computer with your license and you could install and you could, you could have like signed into another computer with that same license. But as long as they're not trying to run at the same time, you should. Oh. should... Okay. That's awesome. Sorry. Wow. Thank no, you. No worries. And Caitlin, I got your picture of the, the setup you guys have with the, um, yeah, the full noodle, noodle. Cool. or pipe insulator is what it's called. Yeah, so I'm actually just putting it. Oops, I sent it just to Dr. Bernard's. I sent it in the chat there, so if anyone wants to check out um, that. Whoops. No, that was a Zoom link. I'm sorry, you guys. Let me download it. See if this works. There we go. So, as a uh, as as an example of what could also work if you aren't able to three D print or figure something else out. The Oklahoma team in a pinch were able to this afternoon fix a noodle onto the mask. So that's great. Thanks again for, for being uh, creative with that problem solving, you guys. Okay, cool. All right, well, unless there's anything else, if anyone wants to touch base about, I can hang out for a while. And um, <laughs> I love it, Caitlin. Good job um and talk otherwise i hope i wish you all the best of luck oh um does so oklahoma is going to try and fly tomorrow does anyone else uh it sounds like um kentucky's still building the left but uh like matt do you guys have any idea of when you might be able to get a get a flight going our goal is tomorrow nice cool and um Let's see, Dr. Bailey, do you guys think you'll try and fly without, uh, do you have like a Kestrel or something you could use as a stand-in for the left? Um, no, well, we do have, we have tons of stuff that we could use. Right now our problem is helium. We're at the, uh, we're still waiting for the account to get set up so we can actually buy the helium and get it on site. Um, I gotcha. So we're, we're, and then, a, that's coupled with uh, our, it's the end of our fiscal year and our purchasing people don't want to actually make any purchases until July 1. So we're, uh, I'm, I'm pushing as, as far as I can, but we'll, we'll see. Jen and I can, uh, we can have a good talk with you about that as well. We, we got an email uh, advising us of some similar restrictions, but uh, they, they recently kind of, assigned all of that accounting to us to do for them and oh that's that's kind of them i mean you know we have rental vehicles to buy and stuff so we're keeping it to a minimum but there's only you know we can't like 
press pause on our research. Yeah, the, the, my, my goal is to be able to do a, a non-instrumented launch early next week with a, a radio song launch late next week. So I'm hoping that we'll get the, the helium in later this week so we can start working on that stuff. Cool. Okay, and then I, I got the message here from Oklahoma too. So yeah, this sounds great. I mean, it sounds like we're all we're all just gearing up to be on the same page in terms of of our flying abilities. That's that's great. I'm sorry it took so long with uh, with the delays and such, but I guess you know that we we do the best with what we can in this world these days. Thanks everyone for your time and looks like we kept it under 30 minutes. So that's great. And uh, I'll get this posted in case anyone wants to review any of the um, report settings, things in GRA, but hopefully you can all go in and explore on your own too. And that'll be more interactive than a video anyway. So, okay. Thanks everyone. Have a good rest of your week. Bye-bye. <laughs> nice. Thank you. You're still recording. Oh, yeah.